up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. My son had been asking me, Dad, did you see it? And I'm like, nah, not yet. <laughs> he hadn't seen the last episode yet, either. It was this. It was, I was working from home that day. He was coming home from school. And I said, let's watch it, because he ran into his room. So I said, yo, wait. Let's watch it together. He loves everything Marvel does. I, however, was disappointed. If you've been listening to the show, my sentiments haven't changed towards what they've done. It's not the the, the actor's fault or whatever. I thought Gravik was was fantastic, but everything else, Brian, was sort of we knew what Rhodey was. This, the whole Nick Fury love thing, none of that, Brian, I was interested in. And I was talking to Tracy and he said, this has gotten too comic booky. Your thoughts, Brian, on how they ended Secret Invasion and how this leads into the Marvels, which I was surprised surprised that there wasn't a, like an end credit scene. Was there an end credit scene? Which is surprising. Is it? <laughs> For this yeah, show? because it? of course, because you would think you we know something. We know this is leading up to something. We would think that at the end of this, they've had their end credit scenes for certain uh, Marvel shows, haven't they? And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, I was surprised. I was surprised, being that we know something's coming up next. This leads into something that they didn't tease us with something. Your thoughts, Brian, on this whole on this whole thing, and uh, have, have your thoughts changed? Well, they've changed for the worse. Um, I this is rock. I can't get cheeky with this shit. Look, sometimes I feel like you know either critical scores or audience scores I don't agree with. There's definitely times where I I really like something that the consensus doesn't or consensus loves something that, you know, I, I, I don't. I think this one directionally is very accurate. Critics, it's the lowest rated show for them. I think the scores are too high. I think this is literally the worst thing Marvel has ever produced under its own studio banner, full stop. And I realize that that includes something like She-Hulk, which I have in the winner's column of this show. Congratulations. You are no longer the worst MCU show. Now you know how The Rock feels. Exactly. <laughs> With Black like, Adam. I, I, was like, I was like, look, if you sent me to the desert island and you're like, you can only choose between She-Hulk and Secret Invasion, I'm like, it would take me a Barry Allen microsecond to grab <laughs> She-Hulk and leave Secret Invasion behind. That's how bad I think this show really was. Now... Is it a hundred percent bad? No, as you said, you know, I'm basically going to exempt Kingsley Benadier from all of the commentary. He showed up to work. He put in some work. He gave a performance. Now his character wasn't written awesome, and certainly not at the end. So sure. with the material he had, he, he delivered a performance that to me was like I want to see Kingsley Benadier. In on screen time. again it's funny he was had a small role as one of the kens and barbie didn't have a lot of yes. lines but i was like i want to see this guy this is a guy yeah. i want to so, he, so he's a winner because he rose above the garbage to deliver a performance that i was interested in i i throw an honorable mention to olivia coleman who i, I at least seemed like she was having fun uh, the whole time every scene she did i felt like she was invested she gave you something whether you like it or not a little different character take and i found myself actually saying at the end of this you know, I wouldn't mind seeing her, and even though I don't love Julia Louis Dreyfus in her role, I wouldn't mind seeing the two of them go a few rounds as sort of these spy organizers in the future. There's something there that I think could be interesting. So I give her an honorable mention. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's about where the positives stop for me. Um, I think not only is this show horrible, I think this show in the interconnected MCU did some things that I think are unforgivably bad and very hard to put back in the bottle. And I would love to talk to you about some of those because there's some of the things that by the end of the show, I am just like, I don't know how you come back from this. 
Like, I just don't know how you write your way out of some of the things that this show did. And the fact that Kevin and all on down or Brad Winterbott, whoever is green lighting this and being like, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, shoot this and put this out into the world. I can't believe that they're like, yeah, we're cool with this. And we, it's part of our grand plan. It, it just, it boggles my mind. And it came to a head in the finale, which I think is one of the worst 35 minutes of, of Marvel product you're ever going to see. Yeah. And we, Brian, and we had such high hopes. But you such were right. You were right. Did you hear what he just told us? Which is your whole concern from the beginning is why is this a show and not a movie? And I think your concern was validated in the end because the one thing that would make this comic storyline really pop is you kind of have to have the big name heroes be more of the scroll. Yes, exactly, exactly. And the fact that all we got, no disrespect to Don Cheadle, who's never bad as an actor, but the fact that all we got was a, was a roadie that kind of didn't fit the continuity that we already had. I just don't know that there's a version of this show that works unless you have RDJ, unless you have Scarlett Johansson, unless you have you know, Steve Ra Chris, uh, Chris Evans yeah. doing cameo roles as scrolls to really make those bait and switches have impact. All you gotta do is put in one, sh one, one episode or two and that's it. Not even in the whole joint. But again, Brian, I think you and I have agreed on this mere fact that you cannot continue the MCU without the main hitters involved. You can do certain stories, certain characters, mm -hmm. but when you talk about Avengers, yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I almost feel like this show tried to address that problem and did it in the worst, worst possible way by the end of this show. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we get there. But no, the reason I kind of scoffed at your whole thing about the post credit scene was so much of this show felt lazy and mailed in that it kind of seemed fitting there wasn't a post credit scene because it was like, well, you guys clearly didn't care for the other six episodes. Why would you care to give us another 30 seconds that would excite us about anything? I, that's, mm -hmm. I just... We talked about it after the premiere. Like it just you could just tell. Like Sam Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, like these are really good actors and they just didn't seem that interested at any point. Yeah. I mean, really Brian, I have not too, I don't have too much to say other than I have sheer I have sheer disappointment in and Kevin Feige, man. Yeah, I agree. The buck it's stopped like, with him. I don't know. And the stuff that you hear about Kevin Feige, we got to revisit a Kevin Feige, Fire Kevin Feige Part 2. <laughs> well, this show is definitely going to be in the in the corporate case if it comes to that. I think there's a different, like, there's a difference between taking a swing and it not landing and this. Like, as I said, I don't, I don't like She-Hulk at all. That's why I bring it up in comparison. It's definitely a bottom of our rankings. But there's a, even that show, there's a piece of it that's like, well, you're, there's a swing here and there. Oh, yeah, certainly. You know, we're like, okay, there's a creative choice and you're going for something. Maybe it landed, maybe it didn't. But like, this show doesn't even have that. Didn't even try. How does that feel? Like this show's not taking any risks. This show's not like, it's just not doing it. It's just, it's completely flat from the second it starts to the second it ends. But it, in doing so, it really makes some bizarre choices. So I have three, I'll just start firing them at you. And I've been on this since the beginning. The breaking down of Nick Fury as a character. Why? There's nothing, he has no credibility left to my mind. He's not a spy. He's not super smart. Like, I don't, like, why do I, when I see him on screen at Saber at the start of the Marvels, why does he command any respect anymore after this show? That whole reveal of Nick Fury just getting people to get information from him because he knew secrets is, is, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, 
I just want it to be over. I just want yeah. to start again. I agree. And it's like, I go back to, you know, in, in the first Avengers movie, you have Robert Downey Jr. talking about Nick Fury. And he says, he's the spy. His secrets have secrets. And like, we've for 10 years, we went from that portrayal to this guy, which I just, I'm like, why did you have to tear away all the things that made the character great to where now what's left is just like, how can he be a leader to future Avengers? It, it, Brian, they, 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 it's like giving away the secret of Coca-Cola. Yeah, that's a fair comparison. Exactly. Now is like every, he's like everybody else. Anybody can make it now. Now that they got the secret sauce. Which was clearly the implication of the show that the scrolls had done all the work for him and that he kind of had been lucky to be aligned with them from the, from the Captain Marvel one. And I'm like, if it wasn't for the, if it wasn't for the scrolls, Nick Fury would not be Nick Fury. That ain't no. that, ain't that something? I don't know if I'm most sad or angry. I'm tired of them taking our leaders. I know you are too. I think back to all the classic lines of Winter Soldier. If you if you want to stay ahead of me, you need to keep both eyes open. I'm like, open. no, <laughs> like that's we've undermined all of that with this show. And I'm like, I don't understand why that was necessary, let alone entertaining. Um to happen. So that was my number one. My number two is like, I love your reaction to it. So we knew the roadie scroll flip was coming. But and look, I mean, Cheadle, I'm sure enjoyed it. He got to be very snarky. He got to be kind of, you know, at point sinister. Like, I'm sure that he fun. got As to a- get paid. More money, more money, more money. I don't understand how they've tried to position this in the sense that this basically happened at the time of his injury in civil war correct how does that work for you given like what happened in infinity so infinity war and endgame that's scroll roadie in those fight scenes like that doesn't work for me (laughs) because his personality in this show is a complete 180 from his personality in those films well i find it a bit similar in in some of his uh because he was really playing a comedic role or trying to in in, 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 in perhaps Infinity War and Endgame, one of those two. Uh, so this one, he sort of had that same thing. I don't know. But once we already knew, Brian, the thing is that we already knew he was going to be a scroll, Brian. And how it fits into, I have no idea. I have no idea how this fits into everything, and perhaps certainly it fits into Armor Wars. Certainly, you would think, Brian, that we would be enlightened with how that all went about and what's. I, this is the thing, Brian. This is the this is the mistake they they continue to make now. Now with this whole multiverse stuff, is that they continue to open up a can of worms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get to that. That they, that they can't explain. <laughs> Oh, they won't explain. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, this show didn't do Armor Wars any favors, in my opinion. I mean, we've got our questions as to whether that's ever going to make it. But like, now that we're we're left with like, okay, we have real Rhodey still with his injuries from the Civil War fall, and I suppose Armor Wars would have to proceed with that character, since the Scroll version, I assume, is dead, 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 not coming back. I, I, I just. I don't know, like it just the way the t- the choice of the timing of where they where they're cre- they're claiming the the abduction took place, like it, it feels very forced and plot holy to your point. Like it just feels like something that's like I don't think all these pieces are going to get put back together in a way that makes sense now. And people are going to go uh, back and rewatch, right? People are now going to go back and rewatch all of his appearances in Falcon and Winter Soldier and Endgame and Infinity War and be like searching for signs of behavioral change. And I can tell you, like, you're not going to find him. He's going to act the name of the actual roadie. This was written for this show. Exactly. <laughs> this and that's the problem. Innovation had no plans of doing this. That's a problem. Like, had you written even something like had you written something into Infinity War Endgame where if you look back on it, you would have been like, well, that was an odd choice at the time. But now actually looks like. Oh, maybe he was playing both sides and that could make some sense. Like, there's none of that. I mean, he, I just remember, like, I just have this image of them when they're trying to figure out time travel and he's in there, 
like with everyone else talking about like hot tub time machine back to the future he's like the same old dude like i just i, I don't buy it i don't buy the choice right and it's same and like everett ross is not as harmful because he hasn't been in as many projects but there's a similar case to be made of like the last time we saw everett ross he was breaking protocol to help in uh wakanda forever and it's like now we're supposed to believe that that was an evil version of him or a scroll version of him that may or may not have been helpful like he's always been helpful and sympathetic yeah. to the characters we care about at every mm -hmm. step of the way since he's been on screen this is obviously something that wasn't well thought out or planted brian even yo agent sitwell i don't want to diverge too far but mm -hmm. agent sitwell when we found out in i believe winter soldier that he was a double agent brian yep if you go back to the first Avengers, yes, there's one shot, overhead shot of him doing something. Something, exactly. But he's not like laying his life on the line for Coulson on the helicarrier, right? So that's the thing. Like he, they didn't write him into a corner. All I know is that Rhodey's leg should be atrophied to. <laughs> It's, his legs should not exist. It should be bone, skin and bone. <laughs> That's it. Hasn't used them for what eight, seven years? Yeah, it's tough. Come on, man. It's Come tough, on, man. So that means that also to that point, that means it's the scroll Rhodey who's learning to walk at the end of Civil War, who but who actually does know how to walk and is faking that rehabilitation. That's what that's saying. Yeah. It's pretty elaborate. Uh, yeah, it's like it just it just clearly. Just, I don't. I don't buy it. I don't. Yeah. You, you exactly. Don't buy any of it. Exactly. 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 Which okay. So this leads to my biggest. When this when this happened, I I, I literally put my head in my hands and I said it's over. I was like it's over. Now it's over. Which is the super scroll. Oh God, no. Oh my God. Okay, so Amelia Clark. Okay, we, as fans of <laughs> the nerd genre, we need to band together and get a restraining order against her from <laughs> ever touching any of these properties again. Get away from me! Terminator. Wasn't all her, but that movie ended it. <laughs> Solo. Worth, that, that ended Star Wars Expanded Universe. And I told you, when they cast her, I was like, if she, if this thing goes bad, if she <laughs> if she sinks a Marvel show, you said that's that. It. Yes, you did. You did years ago. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And here yep. we are because not only does she sink the show, she becomes literally the most powerful being that we have seen in the Avengers verse. That is unconscionable. So their solution to the Avengers lineup is to have one person with questionable ethics who's a scroll now empowered with the power of every single avenger what were you thinking how Thanos. do you write your way past that how do you write your way past that with a character like that walking around and if she doesn't appear again that in of itself is a failure of writing because you're like you now have put this character into the world yeah. why and not only that but I don't want to see this character again because the effects look terrible. When she's pulled out the mantis, I was like, you've <laughs> got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's like, make it stop. I've had enough of your games. Like, <laughs> I was like, this is what I was watching. I was like, this is the end. Like right here. This is it. Like, this is something that I would have thought like the worst of Sony the worst of Warner Brothers would have come right? up. The worst of the old fight. It's like, game. this stuff makes you look forward to like Madam Web and see what they're going to do over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Seriously, though, what do you do with that character? This is, th Kevin was in the room and he read this and he said, yes, I like that. If I would, oh. I would have thrown my body in front of this because I, I just, like I said, and I was worried because when, when they went to the grave site 
in the prior episode and, and the vial was revealed and you kind of were getting the sense of what this was. And I was like, they're not seriously going to like deploy this and actually create a, and like, this is where comic adaptation is an art, not a science, right? Cause like the idea of a super scroll, like, okay, that, yeah, that exists that this idea has happened in comics, but it's like, that doesn't mean it's a great idea to put on screen in exactly. a multiversal story. Exactly, yo. So it's like, what does Super Scroll mean then to if ever you have them in Fantastic Four? What does it mean? He's certainly not more powerful than this dude. And then it's like, okay, so let's say she, you know, let's say she breaks bad for, for the next appearance. Who's going to stop her? Who's stopping her? Who has, who has even a prayer? Like, not even Carol Danvers would have a prayer against her in a fight. Like, what is the point of that? So what, why, so is it like Kang Dynasty going to be her against all the Kangs? Is that it? Is that, is that the fight? That might actually be fair. I don't know, but I, I just. Perhaps this is their way out. This is probably, this is probably how they're going to write it out. That was a serum that probably lasted like a week or two. I don't know. That's how they're going to do it. That's why they have to do. If well, they want to continue either. with these shenanigans, they, that's, that's the only way we're going to believe it. Well, that, but see that, and then that opens up its own can of problems because cone can of worms. Because then you're like, you, you built up to that moment as this defining moment of this particular show, and you have the Amelia Clark character being recruited by Olivia Coleman, presumably for some Captain Britain linkage that they're kind of loosely setting up there. If you're then going to say that this is like a video game power up that wears off after like a week. That completely undermines what happened in the end of this show, which granted is not that much, but like you can't keep making decisions like that where it's like, haha, you thought this, you know, you thought this meant something and now it means nothing. Like that, that doesn't work. You, you Brian, do you think the MCU Marvel Studios is going to make a play at Henry Cavill for Captain Britain, yo? You think Henry Cavill is going to save the MCU, yo? No, I mean, he, if I was him, I would actually steer clear right now of that offer I mean, his career is not in the best you know condition i would i would not i would not hitch my wagon to a, a fading but mcu but he's doing this forty thousand league stuff i don't know what the warhammer or whatever yeah 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 no, no, brian nobody care about that i'm sorry i think we gotta the, do a top five or top 10 worst mcu shows or anything or something <laughs> top 10 I for, mean, for this, this because this, this is, is just this is, a, this is impressive man we we put she hulk in the basement and then this went <laughs> in like the foundation somewhere like i don't know how you to pull could that off. not tell me that secret wars was going to be whack when compared to she hulk you could not tell me i had this as like my third or fourth most anticipated this is show. buster douglas versus tyson <laughs> So I look. I, I think, like I said, I think the pro the problems are many. I think this. I mean, look. I think the fate of the Marvels was sealed before this show came out. But this show is the nail in the coffin of that movie. That movie. I mean, you look around at the box office and what people are responding to and caring about. And clearly, you know, you look at Barbie, you look at Oppenheimer. Like when the right original thing hits. Everyone is willing to plunk down their Benjamins and go to the theaters and watch. But nobody is going to see these projects with the way they're floundering right now. And I think the Marvels with that you know, $200 million plus budget, poor trailers and promotion, a poor lead in with a bad vibe around this show. I mean, that thing, that thing's got like Shazam flash style disaster, Black Adam size disaster written all over. I mean, like, you know, 200 plus million dollar budget, 100 million to market. I don't think this thing's gonna get to like 400 million global. Like that's a 200 million dollar loss. I'm curious to see Brian if this, if the Marvels gets great reviews, because the Nano Coffin if it get if it gets great reviews, Brian, and it makes no money, no nobody's really interested in seeing this movie. That'll be the Nano Coffin. True. Although I think there's a chance Blue Beetle might have pretty good reviews, and that clearly is not going to make any money. So, I mean, it's unfortunate. But yeah, no. For this show, I mean, if, to the extent we have to do this, so I, I basically would give it on five star scale. I'd give it 
Uh, we give Kingsley Benadir and Olivia Coleman with an honorable mention get you to 0. 0.5. There's nothing else redeeming about this show. Do not yeah. watch it. Watch anything other than this. Um, and let's just pray the Loki trailer, which you know apparently people are excited about. Let's just pray we get some some upswing in the fall from that. Because I don't know how we can go lower after this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Secret Invasion, the show that we were pumped yeah. for it to arrive because there would be some reveals that would be shocking. And, and, and Brian, it wasn't as shocking to me once, I think once I saw the first episode, because the trailers looked like we were gonna, we were gonna be in for something, right? Yep. Once he saw that first episode, we were like, oh, I don't know. Hey, shout out to just Kobe, got... Kobe Smulders, though. She was like, get me the F out of here. I'll take a, I'll take a bullet. <laughs> Everybody off, wondering <laughs> for five weeks if she's going to be back. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Secret Invasion, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Jam Report. Judged you. You asked it for a prize, and it told you no. The show goes on! Yeah!